In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Mass, which is being offered for the repose of the soul of Stella Gomez. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side, denounce it, let us denounce it. All those who used to be my friends watched for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error, then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinise the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them, for I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. In your great love, answer me, O God. It is for you that I suffer taunts, that shame covers my face, that I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my mother's own sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great love, answer me, O God. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your love that never fails. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. In your great love, answer me, O God. 
The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. The Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn captives in their chains. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise. The sea and all its living creatures in your great love answer me O God. A reading from St Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man and through sin death and thus death has spread through the whole human race because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all, from Adam to Moses, even though their sin, unlike that of Adam, was not a matter of breaking the law. Adam prefigured the one to come, that the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Word was made flesh and lived among us. To all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows, Do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetops. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him, rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? And yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing. Why, every hair on your head has been counted, so there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As we heard in today's Gospel, do not be afraid. For everything that is now covered will be uncovered, and everything now hidden will be made clear. Before Jesus, we had lost our way. We were unable to be what we were made to be. That is, ultimately, to be completely united with God in heaven. To really appreciate how brilliant Jesus' coming and freeing us is, we need to also appreciate what the problem was. And that problem called sin. 
one which we, which we know the name of all too well and hear so much about. Sometimes we can think that sin is just a breaking of the rules, as if there's a rule book and it's breaking. But it's something more than just breaking rules. As St. Paul says in the second reading, sin existed in the world long before the law was given. So it is something deeper, more at the heart of our, is a problem at the heart of our being. So what is sin then? So God created everything good. You know the, old, the Genesis story. He looked at it, it was good. And then with man, it was very good. Well, what makes something good? This is a little bit of philosophy here, but uh, bear with me. What makes something good is if it fulfills the purpose it is made for. If I have a glass, it is a good glass because it holds liquid. If it were not to hold liquid, it would be, it would not be a good glass. Okay, going up the order of creation, animals. Animals are good because they also fulfill their purpose. They do what they are made to do. A giraffe doesn't wish it was a lion. A lion doesn't wish it was a fish. A fish doesn't wish it was a bird. They are, they, they live within the bounds of what they are made to be. Well, man, we were part of our create, God created us is to love, to share in his love. But love, because it's a choice, it means that, by its nature, because it's a choice, it means that we are able to choose against the purpose we were made for. An animal can't do that, an animal object can't, can't do that. We, though, can. We have the power to choose in that sense, to reason in that sense. So God had his reality. He created the world with order. The sin of man, and this is the sin of eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, is that we decided that we wanted to try and live according to our own reality rather than the reality God had created. Now there isn't two realities, there's only one. So the problem with us acting and living against that reality is we cause ruptures and we cause problems, the biggest of which is this fracture of sin. Something right at our being, hence why we have original sin. Something beyond just the act we do or don't do. So, a big problem. But, as St. Paul also says, Adam prefigured the one to come. Adam, obviously, the first uh, was the first to sin. But the gift itself considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace, coming through one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. God is ultimately the one in control, so God could fix this problem. We could not. We were lost, we were unable to. Jesus Christ came to free us from this bondage to sin and show us the way in which we can live according to what we were made for, according to the reality that God made. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth and the life. We're always struggling to uh, take control. We want to have control so much um, in, our, in this life. We want things to be the way we want them to be. The problem is, is the way we want things to be isn't the way that things are. And so we struggle, we torture ourselves because by trying to be what we're not, we cause ourselves pain and suffering. But there is no need for this struggle. This is, what, this is why Jesus talks about the weak and the poor and the, those who are vulnerable, talks about children, Mere to, he, I thank you, Father, for not giving it to the learned and clever, but to mere children, he says. Because that vulnerability 
in all of those things is what helps us to realize that we can't fix the problem. Ultimately, we cannot fix it. Only God can. He knows. He knows. Listen to what the gospel says here. Why every hair on your head has been counted. So there is no need to be afraid. God knows everything. He knows the way to fix these problems. In the world today, we, see, we are seeing around us so many problems and it can cause us such great anxiety and fear. And that's, that's, it's all, you know, that's a natural response. But we should be reassured that Jesus Christ came and saved the world. He has, we, through him, all the problems we encounter are solved as long as we let him guide us instead of trying to guide ourselves. Whatever the problem is that we encounter, God is bigger. So let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus Christ came among us to forgive our sins and to reconcile us to the Father. Let us ask the Lord to open his grace of forgiveness to the whole world. Let us pray for all those who are victims of violence and greed, that they may find justice and peace. May the Lord bless all those who work to help them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today is Father's Day. May the Lord bless all fathers in our parish community, that they may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in the guidance and care they give their children. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today is also day for life. Let us remember the unborn child in our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those preparing our churches to be open for private prayer, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit to ensure a spiritual and safe homecoming for all the faithful. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who are ill with the coronavirus, with cancer and other illnesses, especially those who are in hospital or waiting test results. We pray, Lord, that your healing love will sustain and comfort them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us now pray to our Blessed Mother Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. May our prayers be pleasing to you, Lord God our Father, and may your everlasting love sustain us always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Word made flesh, Son of God. Jesus, 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancelled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I'm using Eucharistic prayer number three. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, Declan our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The eyes of all look to you, Lord, and you give them their food in due season. Spiritual Communion Prayer My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I wish you all a very blessed Sunday and do listen to the notices that uh, we will make at the end this video. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks be to God. Do not be afraid, for I have Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of thy word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer me. Amen. You will never sink beneath the waves. Do not be afraid. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. So just to thank everyone again for their help in producing these online masses. Now we're always looking for more readers and singers, by the way, so if you feel you would like to, please do get in touch and we can explain the process. 
any children who'd like to do some drawings associated with the upcoming gospel readings or the theme of a particular mass then do please email them through a few days in advance and you can always check online what masses are coming up and what the readings are. Now as you know we're able to open our churches for the purposes of prayer at last and having completed all the necessary risk assessments the diocese have given us permission to open our church here in Chard. So what we plan to do is to start on Thursday the 25th from 11 until 12 in the morning. And there will be stewards present so we can have a trial run in terms of all the health and safety implications. So that will be the, our first opening on Thursday the 25th from 11 till 12. And then the following Thursday uh, we will open again from 11 till 12 and then the Friday also from 11 till 12 and Saturday and Sunday from 3 until 4 so that will be hopefully the general routine will be that Thursday Friday Saturday and Sunday but do bear in mind that we'll still continue with the drive-in adoration on Wednesdays from 10 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon so God bless and continue to keep safe.